In the interest of creating a liquid syllabus that's responsive across multiple devices, the easiest way to organize your materials is from top to bottom. But let's say you want to organize your materials so that there's materials appearing on the left and materials appearing on the right. The simple way to do this would be to create two tables side by side, each of them taking up 50% the width of the screen. It would be better to use two tables, each table with a minimum width of 290 pixels that can then appear one on the left and one on the right. Let's see why. To explore this, I went to the Google Chrome store and I downloaded the Chrome extension Responsive Viewer. Responsive Viewer will show my course on several different devices. An iPhone, a Galaxy S9, a Pixel, an iPad, or a large screen. As you can see, organizing material top to bottom works really well in terms of a responsive design. So here are three different mobile devices. As I scroll down, my material organized in a top to bottom fashion is showing up well. Now we get to where I used two tables, each 50% the width of the screen. And on a mobile device, it's not showing up so well. Since each piece of information is only given 50% of the screen width and it's a small screen, it's looking very stretched out. In fact, because the material on the left is much longer than the material on the right, I have additional material being dragged up on the right hand side. But if we maintain a minimum width of 290 pixels, we can see that that issue goes away. And importantly, the material that previously appeared on the right now appears below instead of being squished. On an iPad Pro device, again, here's our materials organized top and bottom. Here's material organized left and right with no minimum width specified. And again, we're seeing that because the left side is taller than the material on the right, we have material being dragged up. And here's where we have a minimum width specified. And again, looking good on the iPad Pro. Finally, for a large screen, it performs as we expect it to. So let's take a look at the Canvas web page and see how we accomplish this. So I'm going into Edit View, and here's material that was organized top to bottom. And you can see it's very straightforward, no special things being done. So if you're in a time crunch, this is a great way to go. If you want to organize stuff with the left-right orientation, that can be done if you're not having any minimum width, just using a table. You could have two columns here, each is 50% the width of the screen, but we saw that didn't work so well. And then here's where we specify a minimum width. And I want to point out that this is not one table with two columns, it's two separate tables side by side. That's going to be important so that the tables can either be left, right, or top, bottom. Inside this table where we have the text, there is another table. I'm going to go ahead and delete it, and I'll put it back in and watch how I do that. I head on over to the table icon, choose table, select the table. I'm going to go to the table properties. I'm going to say that the width is 290 pixels, height one pixel. I chose 290 because when you're working with a mobile device, they don't tend to get much smaller than 320 or 300 pixels. And a border width of zero so that this is not visible to our reader. And same thing uh, over here, if we look at the properties, 290 pixels width, one pixel height, and the border width is zero. So now we have two tables. Each table has an inserted table, the top left, and this inserted table is what is specifying a minimum width of 290. Otherwise, these two tables are each happy to be at 50% uh, of the screen width. I'm taking a quick look at their properties. Here we go, 48% uh, width, height, uh, depending upon the text in it, and border width is zero. And then same setup if we have text on the left and a video on the right. This video was embedded using the insert embed option and grabbing the embed code from YouTube. Okay, so how do we make it so that these tables will appear left, right, or reflow to top, bottom? To investigate that, we're going to need to look at the HTML. So I'm going to put a bunch of X's here so I can find this spot when I look at the code. So here we go. So I have these two tables. One table has text in it, and the other table has the YouTube video in it. For the table on the left, 
I'm just going to add this bit of HTML code. Float colon space left semicolon. And that's going to fit within the quotes following the style equals. By inserting the float colon space left semicolon, the table on the left will appear on the left as long as there is room. Otherwise, the two tables will appear top and bottom. All right, just one more thing to take a look at. I removed the X's from the HTML. Here is a regular view. I'm going to save it. Scroll down to the bottom, and you'll notice that here is the text on the left, here is the video on the right, and the etc. have creeped up below the video. And I'd rather have them be below both the text and the video. So let's see quickly how we can do that. We'll go up, click Edit, scroll down, and right here where I have the etc. I'll put a carriage return, go back up. I'm going to insert a table. Go to the properties, change the width to say it's 100%. The border width is zero. And that will then force this other material to appear below both the text and the video. Let's see how that looks. All right, and that's success. We'll go through step by step the process of adding in some text on the left and a video on the right. So first click edit in our, on our Canvas page. And we'll insert this between the two paragraphs. I'll put in some space there. We're going to put in five tables to accomplish that. Let's put in our first table. It'll be a one by one. And we'll go to Table Properties and set it to have a width of 48% and a border width of zero. That's where the text is going to go. And then immediately to its right, I'm going to put in another table, one by one. It will have a width of 48% and a border width of zero. And that's where the video is going to go. And at this point, they are now appearing at top and bottom rather than left and right. We'll have to fix that shortly. So in this top one, we're going to put in our text now. And there we go. We've got the text. Now let's grab the video. We'll go to YouTube and to share. Click Embed. Copy the embed code. Head back to our example. And in Canvas, we'll click the Insert drop-down menu. We'll go to the embed option and we'll paste the embed code and click submit. Okay, so now we have our two tables, but we also want to make sure that there's a fixed width of at least 290 pixels. So I'm going to go to this first table and I'm going to insert a table within it, a one by one. I'll go to its properties. We'll change the width to 290 px for 290 pixels. Height, just one pixel and the border width zero, so that it's not visible to the viewer. Well, the same thing for the table that has the video in it, clicking just to the left of the video, but within the table. Go to the table icon, add in a one by one table, click properties, width again to 90 px. For the pixels height, one px, one pixel height, border width zero. And then finally, below these two tables, I'm going to add in our fifth and final table here, a one by one. It's going to have a width of 100%. And this is going to make sure that the text below doesn't creep up. And a border width of zero. And it's not done yet. So, so far, I have the text appear on top and the video appear on the right. But we want the text to be on the left and the video on the right whenever the screen is large enough to accommodate that. So I want this text on the left, if you will, float and always be on the left whenever there is space. Today I'm going to have to edit the HTML. So whenever I'm going to do that, I put a bunch of X's so I can find where I am in the HTML code. In this case it was rather easy, but in some cases it can be a lot of HTML you're going through. So for the table that has the text, I'm going to add in where it says style equals and has quotes within those quotes. I'm going to add in float colon, space, a left, semicolon, and that's it. I can click Save. Now it's looking good. I can go back. We're going to get rid of these X's. And then I want to change the padding for the text table, if you will. I'm going to add in, let's say, 15 in the padding section. And now when I go to View, there's a little bit more space between the text and the video. 